Hey guys, my name is Bill, this is Yo-Yo Tech. I'm super excited to be here today. I'm standing outside this beautiful, brand new, custom-built home. But even better than the home itself, it's obviously a breathtaking place, is the home automation, the smart brains that lie within it. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna meet with Chris from Sonic Systems. Chris and his company have designed everything from the core of this house to the wiring to the systems that run it and make it go. Lighting, HVAC, camera, security, everything, you name it. Not only what is here today, but they have built this system with future proofing in mind. It is wired for anything the future homeowners may desire. Let's go on in and we'll take a look. We're here today with Chris from Sonic Systems. Chris is a professional installer of home automation and smart home technology. Uh, Chris has brought us out today to a model home that he has worked with recently. And uh, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about this beautiful house you're in? Sure, so um, I've been in the business of uh, electronics in general uh, for about 20 years. When I started my company, which was about nine years ago, um, I wanted it to be a home automation company from the start, not somebody who did a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but somebody whose core business was home automation. And by that, it does mean that we have to be experts in each of the categories that we do. So we do everything from home security, um, video surveillance, door intercoms, lighting control, climate control, um, audio video, of course, and uh, anything that comes down the line. Uh, so here in this home, uh, this is a good example of what a uh, modern home uh, would look like as far as like some of the features that this builder has chosen to provide as a, as a, as a sort of standard feature in his home. Um, and it's got uh, pre-wiring so that it's uh, future ready. So whoever decides to purchase the home, they have a lot of upgrade potential uh, with things like window blinds or TVs and home theaters and things like that. And I mean, home automation is, is a big buzz right now. It's everywhere. I mean, there's, uh, you know, homes, you go to a big box store now and you see all sorts of home automation devices. How, yeah. how is that the same or different from what it is you do? So there's aspects of those devices. I would call them gadgets. Um, a lot of them are going to be sort of like they do one thing and they have an app for it. Um, and, the, and they do very cool things. Uh, what we do here is a little bit more sophisticated. So everything kind of works harmoniously together. Uh, you have one app that controls it all instead of many different apps. Um, parts of the system can communicate together. So instead of just having a light that I can turn on with my phone, which is cool, but not very practical, I can actually do other things like use the light switch to close my blinds or use a button on there to shut the whole house off. So would you say the big, one of the big differences is that maybe someone looking at the two different ways of approaching this would be reliability and, and the fact that going with a professional system is going to be something that's going to continuously work and work the way you expect it to? I would say so and uh, some of these uh, gadgets they also kind of like depend on internet like in other words they don't work if you don't have internet so what we do is kind of like uh, make it really easy and accessible for anyone who's in the home. And I know from stuff that I work with, and I mean you mentioned it there, it's a, it's a hobby for me, it's something that I do that takes a lot of work to keep things up and running the way yeah. I want them to. I would imagine a homeowner who's coming into somewhere like this is essentially going to want to walk in, have a turnkey solution. That's correct. I mean the best analogy I can say is that you know somebody who's a car enthusiast is going to tune and work on their car and tweak it, maybe rebuild their engine, but someone who otherwise drives a car uh, has no you know background knowledge on cars to be able to use it. So this is a home that's basically been designed to work all as one, be reliable, um, you know, work the way they expect it to, and continue to work that way. And they can just walk in and use it. You still do work with some of the popular gadgets. I mean, we saw the a Google Home in here and yeah. the Amazon Alexa, so things like that. So just because it's a professional install, you're not necessarily missing out on some of those things and being able to integrate them and still use them within this house. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, depending on the brand, uh, some companies are very good at working with third-party systems. So I've had some customers who, you know, uh, they bought all these various things. Maybe they have a motorized shade. Maybe they bought a Sonos sound system. Maybe they have a lock. But there's certain things that they would like to do with it that uh, by itself it can't do. So if they wanted to do a scheduled function where everything shuts off at a certain time, the gadgets aren't going to do that on their own. You need to have a control system 
in place to be able to make things like that happen, like a house-wide scene. Sonic, you've come in and you've worked with a builder on this house and you've built it from the ground up. Yeah. But I mean, do you ever work with people where they've got a house and like you mentioned, maybe they have a few gadgets or they have an interest in that. Do you ever go in and basically assess it with them and, and say, how do we take it to the next level and make it professional and make it work? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, the, the options for wireless uh, integration is much bigger than it ever was. Um, so even with Crestron, as uh, let's say our primary brand that we sell, um, they do offer quite a bit of products that can go into an existing home without any wiring. Right, so if someone's building a house, I mean, they're best off to contact you right from the beginning. Yeah. That way you can kind of assess what's there and make sure, you know, the, the pre-wiring and stuff like that gets in before the house is finished. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Definitely uh, a smart idea to have uh, wiring, and even if it's not something you plan to do right away, you know, uh, it's a small expense to have in place to be able to add these things later on as, uh, as the budget opens up and people are living in the home. So Chris, uh, the house is fully outfitted, fully designed for home automation. You guys were responsible for that setup. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So what we have here is a, uh, a fully smart home, uh, which is controlled in this case with an iPad. We've got an iPad in the launch port docking station, which you can see we can take around the house with us or we can put it on the wall to charge it. Uh, from here, I've got access to, my, to see who's at my front door. I can look at my security cameras uh, from here as well. And then I can also control my home automation, which allows me to do things like the climate control, lighting, audio video, um, door locks, anything that we've essentially just integrated into the home is, is able to be controlled from here. Uh, this app is also available to be used on your mobile phones, so that can be done while you're in the home or away. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, essentially it's ready for people to add on if they want to include uh, home theaters or TVs. It's very expandable. Everything's basically installed on this iPad in a custom case for the iPad and mounted on the wall. Yeah. Um, do you have these throughout the house or just the one here? In this house, we've got one, but it's pre-wired to accommodate for one in the in the basement as well as in the master bedroom. So like you said, they can do it from their own phones and things like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the app essentially can be installed on any device. It can be Android or Apple. From here, we control the lights, the audio, the doorbell, the thermostat, anything else we're missing? Um, the AV, I think you mentioned? Audio video. Uh, we could do door locks. This house doesn't have it, but it's uh, it's an easy add-on. If we change out the lock for one of the, like a Yale lock, for example, Okay. Um, we can do that here. Um, so, and the alarm system is also integrated to work on that, on the same app. Okay, nice. So as far as everything being off the iPad, can they still walk around the house and control everything manually? Turn the lights on and off, or is there anything that has to be controlled from here? Um, I guess really the only thing that sort of has to work from here is your audio video. Okay. Um, as far as the lighting is concerned, it pretty much works as you might uh, expect. Uh, we can show you a little bit later what some of the uh, controls for the lighting look like, but there are some manual controls on the walls. The thermostat works like any thermostat from the wall. Uh, the security system still has its regular keypads. This just basically provides you with like a central interface that makes it easier for, to operate everything on one uh, platform. Okay, nice. And you also mentioned here that we have the voice control for the house. Yes, in this case we've uh, we featured the uh, Google Home. Uh, it could also be with the Amazon Alexa or the Echo. Um, and that provides just another layer of uh, user interface that you can that you can use to to provide extra convenience. So we've got your traditional light switches on and off. You've got the iPad or your phones to control the house, and you can even use your voice to turn things on and off and control your music and audio. Yes. Okay, so if we want to go ahead and control from your traditional, you've got some special light switches and controls you've installed here on the wall. That's right. So these are uh, wireless dimmers. Uh, these can actually be retrofitted into any home. Doesn't need to be a new home. Uh, they just simply get changed over from a basic light switch to a controlled light switch. Uh, the one unique uh, benefit of these particular ones, which are Crestron, is that you can. They also double as a keypad. So we can put uh, customized buttons inside them uh, with engravings, and we can make them do basically anything we want. So if we want to make it turn off the entire house, we can if we want to control a room, or if we want to just control a single light. So the way that this particular one's configured right now, we have family room and we have kitchen here. So when I press that button, it turns off the whole room together. 
Uh, when I press it again, it turns it on together. So we were, we're basically controlling, in this case, four lights from the touch of one button. But if I want to individually control the lights, then I've got them split up here. If I hold it down, then I can dim them as a group. Or if I want to dim a specific light, then I can hold that one button down and dim it that way too. So you basically created scenes that you put on each button and those can be customized or changed around as the homeowner wanted? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So these here, the two room scenes, these are scenes. These ones are more tied to a specific load, but the scene buttons are tied to the iPad. So when you look at the lighting page on the iPad, uh, if you configure your main scene, so you could set your what lights you want on and what level you want, save it to main. And when you come to press this button, it will recall that main scene. And above it we have the... Yeah, so this is a Crestron thermostat. So we're using this to control the heating and, and cooling in this house. Okay. Uh, you'll see this one is fairly uh, simplistic looking. So it's, it's more of a traditional look and clean look. And any of the programming then would be done by the iPad if you wanted to set time. Yeah, so there's, there's full scheduling functionality and, uh, and home and away and a lot of things you can do with it that's done through the iPad. We're in the kitchen of this beautiful home here and uh, want to take a look at one of the features that's kind of unique. So here we've got the Google Home Mini and uh, we're using this as a uh, basically a voice interface to be able to control different aspects of the home. Uh, so one example is that we can control lights, uh, we can turn on music um, and many other things but uh, to keep it simple I'll just demonstrate uh, a couple of the points with lights and music. Sure. Uh, hey Google, turn off kitchen lights. Turning off kitchen lights. Hey Google, turn on kitchen lights. Turning on kitchen lights. So you can see that's pretty simple. Yeah. Similarly for music, I can say, hey Google, turn on kitchen airplay. Turning on kitchen airplay. Hey Google, turn off kitchen music. Turning off kitchen music. So that music source is actually playing from... That's an internet radio stream that we have playing through a media player connected to the system downstairs. Nice, and you'd be able to control other speakers within the house from that same audio command? Yeah, basically just naming a different room. I can uh, turn on music in those other rooms of the house. Okay, nice, and you guys wire the entire house, or you've got, I see speakers over here in the living room, the kitchen, and I saw some upstairs, so you did quite a few speakers throughout the house? Yeah, this house has speakers in the kitchen, the dining room, master bedroom, and the master bathroom. Uh, we've also got speakers in the family room and the basement, which are for 5.1, but of course, music as well. Okay. And then we've pre-wired for patio speakers also. What we do with our homes is now is we run uh, a CAT6 wire with each of the TV bundles as well as some wires so that the TV can be connected with a wire to the internet as well as um, uh, everything is kind of home run to our head end location. And you just have the TVs mounted in the, in the rooms to, for a cleaner look. Here we've got wired for TV. We've also pre-wired for a local AV source. Maybe if they have a video game console or something like that, they can connect it locally. Uh, but everything else, as far as like the um, surround sound amplifiers and cable boxes and that would be located in the equipment room downstairs. And now controlling this, you said we've got the iPad like we talked about already. Do they have to use the iPad to control their TV and change channels, surf, things like that? <clears throat> we do also offer like handheld remotes that would give you like a tactile functionality. So if you wanted to be able to use like a more traditional remote control, um, we have them in button or touchscreen formats and uh, it's a little more uh, user friendly. So I guess for searching for movies or libraries, things like that, maybe you'll jump on your iPad be able to use that. But if you just want to click around and check some channels, you've still got your traditional type of remote control. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's really nice because what we're seeing throughout is the flexibility to kind of be able to do things traditionally, be able to use light switches and things just like you'd expect a home to work, but it's got the added ability to have the iPad or your phone or things like that to actually have the more automated controls. That's the way I see it. It's all about layers. I mean, technically we can make a house that works off an iPad and you have nothing else. No switches, nothing. But that isn't uh, exactly practical for people because, um, you know, we're very used to, you know, walking up to a wall to turn on lights or, you know, just using a remote for a TV. So we just like to make it more convenient so that you can get, um, you know, better use of the technology that you have in the home. 
uh, and but make it accessible for everyone. What would you recommend? I mean, if somebody's building a house or in the process of building a house right now, and I mean, I've seen a lot of wires that you've had, what would be your advice to them to, to get the house pre-wired? I mean, what, are they, what should they be looking at or thinking about? Well, definitely I would say, like, even though, you know, a lot of technology these days is wireless, uh, I have seen, I've never seen a time where we run more wires in a house than we do now. Um, you know, it's, it's, it always gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, you know, your, your choices are much wider when you have uh, the option of connecting something with a wire uh, versus 100% wireless. In some cases, it's going to be cheaper as well, especially for things like security. Um, you know, security, if you're trying to put sensors on every window, uh, the wireless ones add up quite a bit. So as many wires as we can do up front is going to help us in the future. And like you said, it may be a little bit more cost up front, but in the long run, it's going to give you a lot of savings over trying to do everything wireless. Oh, definitely. And up here in the room, I mean, obviously we've got the spot for the TV here, which you mentioned is yeah. pre-wired and ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed the speakers around the room, so yeah. obviously the audio so is, is here as well. Yeah. Um, what else do we have in this room that uh, a homeowner could look at adding for their home automation needs? Uh, so we've also pre-wired for motorized shades um, on the windows in the master bedroom, bathroom, and the entire main floor. Um, so that is something you would be able to control from the iPad. In addition to uh, putting some more of those lights we showed you downstairs, you could also control the lights right off of, or the, sorry, the shades right off of the wall. Okay. And uh, is there anything automatic with the shades as far as heating and can, uh, heating and cooling of the house? I mean, will they go up and down throughout the day automatically, or can they be set up to do that type of thing? Definitely, we can create schedules for that. Um, so once created, the homeowner has full control over whether they're running or not, or if they want to change it. In fact, with uh, when we leave the house, there's like kind of a home and away function. Uh, so we, with our system, it's set up so that you can customize what activities you want to happen when you leave and when you come. So if you want to have, for example, the music to turn off, the lights turn off, and the blinds close, that can all be done by just hitting an exit button that you're uh, at the door when you leave the house. So speaking of modes, I know you mentioned to me before something about a vacation mode. Yeah, our system has like a record function, so while you're at home, it's basically recording activity. You'll just see the normal uh, behavior of people turning things on and off. And then when you leave uh, and you put it in playback mode, it's just going to replay the last couple of weeks period of uh, lighting activity. And I guess so if you're away on your vacation there and then something happens with the alarm system, that gives you first of all the ability to see what's going on. And then I guess you could even potentially give someone access to your house to come in and check on what the problem was. If you add in the, any of the locks and then we have garage door interfaces as well. So if you want to be able to open the garage door, unlock the door into the house and be watching this on your camera so you can do all that from your mobile. So Chris, we're in a little bit of a tighter spot here, we're down in the basement, and uh, maybe you can tell us about what we've got hiding back here in the corner. So this is basically the brains of the operation. So we've got an equipment rack which houses uh, the uh, Crestron hub, as well as the music system. Uh, our security panels are in behind here, um, our network, so the, the, the provider's modem and our router is here, and then uh, our camera recorder is also here. And then all the wires throughout the house, they come to this uh, same location. Uh, what that does is it provides us more flexibility with what we put together as a system. So whether someone wants very has ba basic needs or wants something very intricate, uh, we have got many options with that, uh, given that everything's run to one location. And essentially, I mean, this is this is pretty much a, a piece of furniture. Yeah, the idea is that it's it's maintenance free. I mean, um, you probably everyone has had uh, some some amount of audio video equipment in a cupboard or on a shelf, and things can be tossed inside there like other books and things become like disheveled and disconnected and problems happen when when things aren't organized. So a rack like this keeps things in one place. I mean, if you can want, you can lock it. So if you don't want people tampering with it, uh, it has cooling fans on the top, so it helps ventilate it. And uh, we can install it in a tidy way 
so that if we need to service it later, you know, we're not kind of like uh, putting our hand into a rat's nest of cables. It's, it's just a more professional way of doing it, you can say. So that's it. Uh, I want to thank Chris here from Sonic. Obviously, he's taken us on a tour of this amazing house today, and this is something that um, Chris does all the time. He's setting up houses with professional installations and home automation and smart home systems like that. This is something I wanted to take a look at today. Obviously, on my channel, we do much more uh, kind of DIY type systems, but I think it's really good to be able to see how the professionals are doing it and what it is you can pull together. So Chris, thank you so much for having us here today and hopefully we'll get a chance to look at some of your other projects in the future. Thanks, sounds good. All right.